हरि ओम वक्रतुंड महाकाय सूर्यकोटि समप्रभा वक्रतुंड महाकाय सूर्यकोटि समप्रभा निर्विघ्न कुरु मे देवाभ्यो नम नमस्ते फ्रेंड्स टीम परम वेदांत वेलकम्स यू ऑल टू दिशा थर्टी एट ए न्यू सीरीज ऑफ एन इनवर्ट जर्नी टू डिस्कवर अवर इनर स्ट्रेंथ एंड हैपीनेस थ्रू भगवद गीता वी हैव एंटर्ड द लास्ट फेज ऑफ चैप्टर एट and today we will take up the concluding six verses from 23 to 28 dr satyanarayana lele will take us through these verses he will also discuss the topic of avastha trayam as explained in tatva bodha today's session will be moderated by dr komal prasad sir after the talk we will have a teaching quiz session by dr anupama shetty now it's shloka time and we have shrimati sukanya narayan to chant and explain the shloka of the day she has chosen a shloka from balakhanda of valmiki ramayana which is first verse ever in the world it is in anushtuk meter and set the meter for the next 23999 shlokas of ramayana the verse also has two meanings which sukanya will explain come on friends let's listen to the shloka and the meaning of manishadha pratishtham tam over to you sukanya ji you hari om I'm going to chant a slok from a sloka from the Ramayana Balakanda. Mani shada pratishtam samagamas shashvati samaha yet kraun chamitna dekha mavadihi kama mohitam. Mani shada pratishtam, O Vishnu, the one who resides in the heart of Goddess Lakshmi, from agama shashvati sama, you won everlasting fame yet because kraun chamitna dekha, you killed one of the demon couples. avadi kama mohita one of them who was deeply involved in this act here the demon couple are referred as ravana mandodari o vishnu the abode of goddess lakshmi by killing the male demon couple ravana who in his desire abducted sita you have eradicated the vice from the earth thus getting everlasting divinity for ages to come this explains lord Lam, rama's life and ravana's killing This is the sloka which prompted sage Valmiki to create the Mahakavya Ramayana. The story goes like this: One day, the sage headed towards River Tamasa for his daily ritual bathing. Looking at the beautiful river, he commented to his sishya Bharadvaja, "Look at the river; it's so pure as the mind of the Satvik people." He also saw two love birds singing and dancing and flying in deep love for each other. Suddenly, a hunter shot at the male bird, which lay down in a pool of blood. The sage felt compassionate and very sorry for the female bird. Though hunting is the swadharma of a hunter, it was unrightful to have shot one when the birds were in deep love. In fury, the sage uttered these words to the hunter: "Mani shada pratishtam, tamagama shashvati samaha, yet kraunch mitna deka mavadhi kama mohitam." Next slide, sir. O oh, hunter, you have killed one of the birds when they were in love, which is unrightful. The very next minute, he felt sorry that he had uttered these words in fury. He kept on thinking and repeating these words, and he then slowly realized, though uttered in fury, these words were arranged in chatushtaya pada, good for singing and melodious. Both the sage and his shishya Bharadvaja kept on murmuring these words, which became a melodious song. There appeared Chaturmukha Brahma at the sage's hermit, who said to the sage that those words are uttered by the sage because of the grace of Goddess Saraswati. Thus, Brahma ji suggested to the sage to create the Mahakavya, the life history of the Avatara Purusha Sri Rama, as was narrated by Sage Narada earlier, and blessed him that he'll be able to visualize the entire life incidents of Sri Rama, so that he may write the Kavya 
which will be everlasting are the sun, the moon, and the earth. This epic covers the life of Rama, killing of Ramana, complies with the grammar rules, and the Kavya Shastra, Lakshana, and melody. Hari Om. Sadashiva Samarambham Shankaracharya Madhyamam Asmadacharya Paryantam Vande Guru Parampara. Thank you, Srimati Sukanya, for uh, that wonderful first verse. What prompted Sage Valmiki to write the Mahakavya Ramayana? In today's Disha, we are going to see the last part of Chapter 8, Akshara Brahma Yoga, where Sri Krishna takes us to a path what's called Krama Mukti. Human beings, they have two kinds of goals. First is the finite goals, the dharma, artha, kama. And the second one is the God himself. That's the moksha, parama purusha. What Sri Krishna has advised us is that for permanent peace, security, and happiness, do not depend on the temporary, ephemeral, finite goals, the material goals, but depend on shreyas, not the prayers, it's the shreyas, which is the spiritual goal, the spiritual goal, that's the God himself. From verse 23 to 27 of chapter 8, Sri Krishna talks about two types of paths leading to two types of goals. Now we have seen finite and infinite goals, the material goals and the spiritual goal. And these are the two goals. And what are the two paths we are going to see now? They're called Krishna Gati and Shukla Gati. Shukla Krishna Gati Hete Jagata Shashvate Mate. So these are the two paths, two destinations. And he talks about the two travelers. Krishna Gati leads to finite goals. It provides you with enjoyment, but you have to return from there. Shukla Gati leads to Brahma Loka, and from there, there's a way to get into Jnana Marga, which leads to Mukti. That path is called Krama Mukti. One who goes through Krishna Gati is a ritualist, a karmi. When doing, including this Pancha Mahayagna, any social service, everything where Saguna Sakama, Saguna Brahma is taken into consideration uh, with so, a material benefit in mind, he gets into Krishna Gati. One who travels in Shukla Gati is a Nishkama Upasaka. So he has no particular material benefit in mind. We have to take note here that this chapter 8 is considered an odd man out chapter, even by Swami Paramatananda. That's because Krishna highlights Krama Mukti here. Whereas what he wants Arjuna and each one of us to concentrate on becoming Jnanis here and now, that is Jivan Mukti. So that Jnani, Jnanam is not concentrated in this chapter. Okay. But if we consider only Karma and Upasana, we have to keep in mind Jnanam is not in the race. We have to choose Upasana. In 28th verse, Sri Krishna glorifies Yogi, the Nishkama Upasaka, who conducts this upasana and when we have to choose between upasana and karma, we'll have to choose upasana. So that's the conclusion of chapter 8. To give example of this two paths, you imagine this airport security system where there are two paths for your luggage. Once you put your luggage and the X-ray scanner will automatically put it back and sends it back if it contains some suspicious material. Maybe you were favorite possession, a nail cutter or a Swiss army knife, if it's there, so it will return back. In this cosmic, in this spiritual journey, in this path, what comes back is if your baggage has dharma, artha, kama, the baggage comes back and it keeps rotating eternally unless you take them out, unless you dispossess of them, then only you will be led to the further next step. Whereas this, uh, uh, in Shukla Gati, what happens? So it's like carrying your passport ahead in your bag. Even then you will be 
called there and there the security person will advise you you keep it in your pocket and then you can go only then you can go further that's like brahma loka and then taking you further whereas you remember here the gnani bhakta the gnani who is beyond these two paths he does not carry anything there is no luggage he is a liberated man and then he can directly walk through this and these two gatis these two paths are not required it's like a merry go round where there are two horses like what we are seeing that person who is interested in the black horse will be seeing the world on the outer side all through the passing ups and downs of the world he never concentrates on the actual what's the what is giving stability and what is making this play happen whereas the person in the shukla gati the white house who sits on the medial side he will be constantly seeing the rod the kutasta which will be holding this merry go round in place and through that he will be seeing on the other side the play happening so he is always bound and he will be seeing this uh, dream like picture happening in with the backdrop backdrop of this central uh, kutasta central brahman the god himself okay so these are the two paths but we have to remember these two between these two between karma and upasana the upasana is the better one but in actuality krishna highlights that from chapter 9 onwards we will see what we need to concentrate is on the becoming a jivan mukta take by taking the jnana marga so we have with us dr satyanarayana who will be taking us further for the comparison between the two paths the two travelers and the glory of upasana and then today we will see the tatvabodha chapter about avastha trayam over to dr satyanarayana om shri guru bhyo namaha today disha session 38 is fourth and last part of chapter 8 akshara brahma yoga verses 1 and 2 of this chapter tells us about arjuna's seven questions what is brahman adhyatman karma adi bhutam adi daivam adi yagna and how am i to remember you at the time of death lord lord krishna's answer to the first six questions are described in verses 3 and 4 significance and method of remembering god at the time of death is explained in verses 5 to 14 two types of goals that a person can choose is explained in verses 15 to 22 and today we see two paths that lead to two goals two kind of travelers and upasana being better than karma in verses 23 to 28 earlier lord krishna made a comparison of more or more precisely a contrast study of two possible destinations of human being and those two varieties are finite ones and infinite ones you cannot imagine a third possible goal because every goal has to be either finite in nature or infinite even if we take four purusharthas themselves the dharma artha and kama that will come under finite and moksha being infinite finite goals can be called materialistic goals or anatma and infinite goals can be called as spiritual goal or atma krishna's conclusion is god alone is infinite other than god everything else is finite in this verse 23 krishna says o arjuna i shall speak about those paths departing by which path the yogis attain the world of non return and the world of return having talked about two types of destination in previous verses now from verse 23 onwards krishna talks about two types of margas or paths which will lead to two forms of destination next topic will be two travelers who will take these two paths reaching two types of destination destination has been explained earlier two travelers and two paths will be discussed from this verse to 23 to 27 So Krishna deals with two margas in verse twenty-three, and traveling through two different routes, our travelers or seekers reach two types of destination: anavrittam, that is infinite goal, from from where there is no return, indicates nitya moksha or krama mukti. Other destination being avrittam, 
or returnable goal or finite goal these two paths will be called as shukla marga and krishna marga in next couple of verses so coming to verse 8.24 here krishna defines the brighter path called shukla marga or shukla gati and those who go by shukla marga they will attain brahman and krishna identifies this shukla marga in a particular way based on upanishadic literature vedas upanishads brahma sutras elaborately discuss these two paths and they point out that there are guides to help those travelers in those two paths vedas say there are special devatas to welcome and guide up to a particular distance and therefore hand over to the next guide who are these two who are those celestial tourists or guides or devatas in shukla gati or brighter path we will see next slide it is agni devata or the god of fire jyoti devata or the god of flame ahar devata or the god of day time shukla devata or the god of brighter fortnight of the moon cycle and uttarayana devata the god of uttarayana the first six months of year when the sun is going northwards the time of death has no bearing on after life destination of the atma next question is who is the traveler they are saguna brahma upasaka or saguna ishvara upasaka now we have to see the other route next verse 8.25 this verse is associated with darkness dhumaha in this verse is smoke ratri meaning night and krishna paksha meaning dark fortnight of the moon cycle and shanmasha dakshinayanam six months of the year when sun is towards south so in this verse krishna says departing by that dark path which is presided over by the duties of smoke night fortnight and six months of sun's southern course the yogi attains the lunar light and returns why do we call this path to heaven as dark path this is because seeker will go to swarga and enjoy but once the punya gets exhausted he will come down becoming more miserable therefore it is not bright compared to shukla marga krishna marga is certainly inferior and therefore it is dark krishna marga is darker compared to shukla gati the traveler in krishna marga is yogi meaning ritualistic who is non upasaka ritualist or kevala karmi and now krishna sums up these two margas in this next verse in verse 8.26 krishna gives the names of the path in this shloka as krishna gati and shukla gati otherwise shukla marga or krishna marga otherwise also called as devayanam and pitrayanam these two margas have been created along with the universe not after the creation along with the creation two types of sadhakas are there and therefore two margas are there by following shukla gati a person will get krama mukti by going via bhuloka the word anavrittim in this verse means krama mukti ishvara prapti or the goal of no return and through the other part krishna gati a person will definitely go to swarga loka because even though he has not done upasana he has done his duties therefore certainly he has acquired punyam he will go to swarga loka but minus point here is having exhausted punyam he will come back there is a confusion here krishna says whoever dies in uttarayana kale or shukla pakshe or day time a person will go to krama mukti if a person dies in dakshinayanam krishna paksha or night time it appears as though you will get krishna gati it appears as though the time of death will determine the direction of travel it is not so it is the quality of life that determines the direction of the journey and we should never interpret these two verses or shlokas as referring to time of death but what if criminal die in shukla paksha or uttarayanam what if saints die in dakshinayanam and what if one commits suicide in uttarayanam therefore time of death does not determine the future it is the quality of life that determines the future and this is the conclusion made in brahma sutra as well 
Next verse, what 8.27, he Krishna says, I have talked about two destinations, two paths, and two types of travelers very clearly. And having understood this, the one having understood that one path leads to better future, Krama Mukti, the other path leading to inferior future or the Punar Janma, having understood this, an intelligent seeker will never get confused with regard to karma marga and upasana marga. Whether I should become mere ritualist, whether I should add upasana also, whether I should become a karmi or whether I should become a upasaka, such a doubt should not, be, should not come to an intelligent seeker. Krishna tells Arjuna to become a upasaka. No doubt, you have to do karma. Pancha Mahayagna, but add you add to your karma Saguna Ishwara Upasana also. Therefore, at all times, from now onwards, you may choose Upasana. Whether it is Jeevan Mukti or Krama Mukti, a seeker reaches God alone. Krishna here glorifies God as the destination. So, why are the who are these two types of travelers? Nishkama on Sakama Saguna Upasakas. Both worship God with form. Difference is what they are seeking. Sakama Upasaka is asking God for something for himself. For him, God is the means. Whereas Nishkama Upasaka does not want anything from anything for himself. He, he has God as his destination. In verse 8.28, Krishna says, having understood the difference, Saguna Ishvara Upasaka follows Upasana and by the way of that attains God. Here, God is described as supreme and beginningless abode or destination. Upasana Phalam is greater than all the Karma Phalam. Few Karmas mentioned here are Veda Parayanam, performance of rituals, practice, practice of several types of woes, Vratam, charity and more. Most important point to be noted here is we are only talking about karmi and upasaka. We have not included jnanam here. If we have to choose between karma and upasana, which one is better is the question. Jnanam is not included. So Krishna says upasana is better. It will give a person krama mukti or oneness with God after death. In this last verse, Krishna glorifies yogi, yogi meaning nishkama upasaka, who will attain God, who is superior of all other ephemeral goals in life. So next verse, nishkama phalam transcends sakama karma phalam. Sakama karma phalam gives infinite swarga and nishkama upasana phalam gives nitya ishvara. So this is how it differs two different types. So Krishna tells us, Krishna tells to remember the Lord all the time. Nishkama Saguna Ishwara Yogi has understood and follows Upasana, chooses Krama, Murti, Krama Mukti and attains God. This accomplishment is greater than all the Karma Phalam attained through Veda Parayanam, rituals, austerities and charities. Therefore, one must remember God at all times so that we can remember him at the time of death also. Thus, Krishna has indirectly answered the seventh question of Arjuna here. Prayana Kala Ishwara Smaranam. So with this, I will, next slide. This slide summarizes Shukla Gati or Shukla Marga or Devayana and Krishna Gati Marga or Pitruyana. In Shuklagati, type of traveler is Nishkama Saguna Ishwara Upasaka. And the path is a superior path, which is a bright path. Destination will be Brahma Loka. And the finale here is Krama Mukti, which is called as Nitya Praptihi or freedom from rebirth. Whereas in Krishna Gati, type of traveler is a Sakama Bhakta or Kevala Karmi. Path is the dark path or which is inferior. And the destination here is Swarga Loka. The finale is returning to Bhuloka after dissipation of Punya Loka Praptihi. So moving on to next topic of Tattva Bhoda describing Avastatraya. Knowing the self is the greatest study one can embark on. 
it essentially involves relation of i with the world and god we can classify it into anatma and atma it can further be divided into micro world or vasti and macro world or samasti the micro world or i involves five sense organs the gnanendriyas five organs of actions the karmendriyas five pranas mind intellect memory and ego water exists in liquid solid and vapor state though each are different it is the same water molecule which runs through all the three states likewise every individual has three stages of experience the jagrat avastha or the waking state swapna avastha or the dream state and shushupti avastha the sleeping state in relation to each state of experience we will see three factors that is condition of the mind nature of the experience and the dominant medium involved in each of these experience coming on to jagrat avastha which is the waking state here mind or the inner organ is fully functional all faculties are functioning emotional rational thinking ego memory all being functional it is also called as purna vikasaha or fully bloomed is the internal organs self identifies with the physical body here that is stula sharira and the nature next slide nature of experience in jagrat avastha is it is external or bahya or bhautika prapancha it is concrete tangible world of experience it is available for other peoples also being bahya it is common pub, it is common public world it is an objective experience it is sense organ based indriya gnanam whereas the medium here is golakam that is the sense organ stula sharira pradhana avastha that is physical body oriented next slide talking about swapna avastha or dream state memory faculty alone is functional here everything that happens in dream is only from memory it is also called as ardha vikasah due to partially functioning mind in dream we experience a world which is internal this world is generated out of my own personal private memory it is called as vasana maya prapancha and is subjective universe and it is not accessible to other people it is predominantly sukshma sharira based overall this state is like a vcp to replay various combinations from memory there is no new experience possible in this state moving on to shushupti avastha or deep sleep here mind is fully non functional be it memory rational emotion ego all faculties remain dormant here there is no external concrete or subjective world there is no internal abstract or objective world also it is rather agnana anubhava blissful ignorance karana sharira pradhana avastha this is all our internal external experiences remain in dormant condition and from that alone they will come back the next day so when we are woken up i can say i slept well summarizing avastha trayam waking state deep dreams dream state and deep sleep the tool in waking state is organ based nature of experience here is external which is consistent continuous rational type and the dormant medium is both mind and body and the technical terms used for this state is vishva or virat whereas in dream state the tool is mind or memory and the nature of experience here is internal and this is a irrational type the dominant medium being mind and technical terms used for this is taijasa or hiranya garbha whereas in deep sleep nature of experience is bliss and the dominant medium is causal body technical terms used for this this state of experience is pragnya or antaryami haryom thank you dr satyanarayana for a excellent explanation of the 
two paths, Shukla Gati and Krishna Gati, and further taking us through the Tattvabhada topic of Avastatrayam, the three states of experience. In Disha, our guiding force is the one question about discovering our inner self and happiness. So whatever we see the explanations, the inquiries here in Disha has to take us to that one goal of discovery of our inner self. Here, when we describe, explain, and make a meaning out of the three states of experience, there's a lesson to be learned about finding ourselves. So they say this, uh, our exploration into inner self is based on three things, Shruti, Yukti, and Anubhuti. Yukti is logic. Whatever defies logic, we will not take any further. We are very strict about that. And uh, something illogical, we don't want to take it into this exploration. Second is Anubhuti, our practical experience. And the third is Shruti, what the Shruti, what the Vedas, Upanishads, Gita tells us. So these are the three backbones which will take us further in our exploration. In our experience, we go, go through these three avastas, the three states of experience every day. The waker, dreamer, and the sleeper experience. So how to associate in this, our exploration of our inner self? So what we saw just now is an explanation of these three avastas and what is dormant and what is projected inward and outward in these three states of experience. When I am associated with Jagrat Avastha, I am called the waker. When I am associated with Swapna Avastha, I am called the dreamer. When I am associated with Sushupti Avastha, I am called a sleeper. But who is this I am? I. It's like telling, when I am in the hospital, I am a doctor. When I am in the car, Driving it, I am the driver. In my home, I am a husband. I am a father. But is it only that I am, is it the same person in these three different states? What is that which is continuing between these states? Am I really actually a, only a doctor, driver, or a father? Am I really only that aspect of a waker, dreamer, or a sleeper? Who is that underlying principle who is a constant witness, Sakshi, when we are in these three different avastas? Our discovery of inner self guides us towards that Sakshi who sees, who underlies the substratum which holds these three avastas. That's where we need to look further. So these are the technical names. Vishwa is the name of the waker. It means fully, the mind is fully functional. Taijasa is an internally eliminated person or dreamer. Pragna is a sleeper or a blissfully ignorant person. So these are the technical names which will aid us into our further exploration into our own selves to understand that I, that constant, which stays intact, which permeates through these three different states of experience. With this, we conclude today's portion of Disha and we conclude the eighth chapter Akshar Brahma Yoga and then we have also touched about the Avastatrayam, the portion from Tattva Bodha which gives a wonderful technical description and technical words to name like this Vishwa, Tejasa, Pragna during these three states of our experience. Now we come to the next part, teaching quiz with, from Srimati Pannaga, Dr. Satya Narayana, Dr. Jagdish, and Dr. Anupama have uh, made these questions. And we have Dr. Anupama who will be taking us through the questions. Over to you, madam. Sri Gurubhyo Namaha. Today's quiz is based on Bhagavad Gita, Chapter 8, 
the verses 23 to 28 that we have just heard and the avastha trayam from tattva bodha the first question which of the following qualifies as nishkama upasana the choice is a upavasa b puja japa and parayana c mentally dwelling upon saguna ishvara for spiritual growth and finally d mentally dwelling upon nirguna ishvara for material growth it is uh, mentally dwelling upon saguna ishvara for spiritual growth yes sir next which of the following statements is true karma yoga purifies our minds and gives finite phalam Sakama Upasana Palam is Krama Mukti. Nishkama Upasana Palam leads to Jeevan Mukti. Or without Karma Yoga and Upasana Yoga, Jnanam is enough to attain Moksha. Um, karma Yoga purifies our mind and gives finite Palam is true. Yes, sir. Uh, Sakama Karma Upasana Palam is equal to Karma Yoga Palam. I think it's also true, I think. But this says Krama Mukti, sir. Krama Mukti. Karma Mukti. Karma Mukti. So yes. It is not true. So Sakama Upasana Palam is not Krama Mukti. Oh. It is Nishkama Upasana Palam. So the answer is A. A. Okay. Next question. Which of these determines the after destiny of human beings? After life destiny. First, the time and place of birth, the time of death, the quality of life, or the extent of knowledge that one possesses out of the scriptures through his life. Naturally, it is quality of life, I think. Yes, sir. So please match the following with the most appropriate answer with respect to chapter 8. Yes, sir. Shukla. Shukla. Uh, Shukla Gati is the bright path leading to infinite goals. Yes, sir. Krishna Gati. Krishna Gati is the dark path leading to finite goal of higher lokas. Yes, sir. And uh, Avrutim is the finite goal return to samsara. Yes, sir. Anavrutim. Anavrutim is the infinite goal of no return, I think. It's yes, sir. Moksha. It is moksha. And Kala means? Kala is the path. Yes, and not time. <laughs> Next question, state yes or no with reference to verse 24, which goes like this. Agnir Jyoti Ahaha Shukla Shanmasa Uttarayanam Tatra Prayata Gachanti Brahma Brahma Vido Janaha. Now, I think this uh, Agni Jyoti Ahaha aha represents the sun. Agni Devata is fire, Jyoti is the flame, Shukla, and so yes, it, is false. it is false, I think, the statement is false. Yes, sir. So the question is, does the Saguna Brahma Upasaka, who departs during the day, in the bright fortnight, the Shukla Paksha, and during Uttarayana, does such a person attain Brahma? The tendency to think is yes, but it is no, because here the words Agni, Ahaha, Shukla, Uttarayana represent, represent gods, which as we have just learned, are like 12 guides or devas who guide this Nishkama Upasaka to the Brahma Loka. And the time of death therefore has no bearing on the afterlife or destination of the Jiva. Now, state true or false. In Hinduism, different gods or devas represent intelligent principles that govern the laws of nature. True. Very yes. True. Yes, sir. And this collective cosmic intelligence is called Hiranyagarbha. State true or false, both the Shukla Gati or bright path and Krishna Gati, the dark path, are eternal. True or false? Yes, I think it's true, I think. Yes, sir. Both paths were created with the universe. They are anadi ananta being a cyclic process. Anything cyclical is eternal. Next. 
why does Lord Krishna call the path that leads to the higher lokas, the Swarga lokas, as Krishna Marga or dark path? The higher lokas, going to higher lokas is an ephemeral one. It's a temporary one. You have to come back. That's why he calls it uh, dark path, I think. Yes, sir. So though these lokas have great pleasures, they can be enjoyed only for a finite period and eventually terminate in samsara. So it is considered dark in comparison to moksha, which is eternal. Why is upasana considered a higher sadhana compared to rituals? Uh, rituals can be mechanical. You need not have chitta shuddhi. You need not have engage the mind and intellect. Whereas in upasana, automatically you engage your mind and intellect. That's why this upasana is a better thing. Yes, sir. As the mind is engaged, a person attains chitta shuddhi or mental purification of some sort, which is vital for spiritual progress. Whereas physical rituals may give punya, but not necessarily purify our minds. Next, according to verse 27, which goes like this, naite sruti partha janan yogi muhyati kashyan, meaning having known these two paths, no yogi ever gets deluded. Tasmat sarveshu kaleshu yoga yukto bhavarjuna. So, when should Arjuna take to Upasana? Tasmat sarveshu kaleshu. It is at all times, always. Yes, sir. Beginning right now. Beginning right now. Okay. Coming to Tattva Bodha, Avastatrayam. The first question, what are the 11 parts of Anatma? Mm, Shariratrayam, uh, yes, Panchakosha and Avastatrayam. Yes, sir. Thank you. So what is the physical location of Pancha Indriyani called? They are called Golakams. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How do we conclude that we are in the Jagrat Avastha or the waking state? When I start experiencing the world, yes, sir. I get up in the morning and experience the world through the yes. physical body. That's right. So this Veka is now a Stula Sharira Abhimani Atma. Identification with the body is predominant. When one dies, his Sukshma Shariram and Karana Shariram are still alive. Why do we then say that he is dead? The Sukshma Shariram and Karana Shariram are alive, but they will not be with the Stoya Shariram. They will not be in the position of the Stoya Shariram. That's why they called his, we call him dead. That's right. So because this Sukshma and Shari, Karana Sharira are no longer in possession of the body, the, it is the body which acts as a medium that enables the person to contact with the physical universe. And with the absence of the medium, he is not considered alive. Next, what is the meaning of Vishwa with respect to Avastatrayam? Is it the waker who is experienced with all the Sharira Trayams? Yes, sir. That's right. Vishwa is the complete individual who is functioning through all the three Shariras. Vishwa is therefore the waker. What is the meaning of Vasana? Vasanas are the recordings on the Chitta in the yes. present life and the previous life. Yes, sir. That's right. Next. The Swapna Pancha generated in the dream state is born out of which of the following? The sense organs, B, memory of asanas, C, emotions, and D, ego. Which of these? Dreams come only due to our vasanas, I think. There yes, is sir. memory, B. That's right, sir. Next. In which of these stages of experience is the Sukshma Shariram dominant? So, the Jagrat Avastha, the Swapna Avastha, the Shushupti Avastha, or is it equal in all? Sukshma Shariram is dominant only in Swapna Avastha. Yes, sir. Next question. To which Avastha does the word Taijasa refer? It is a Sukshma Sharira Abhimani. Yes, sir. It is the Sukshma uh, Sharira, Abhimani, Atma, the dreamer, 
who through his own internal light lights up his dream state and therefore is called a taijasa so next question when i say i slept like a dog log of wood which sleeping state does this statement represent it's naturally it is deep sleep only <laughs> yes sir and which uh, uh, which sharira abhimana is it uh, sukshma uh, sorry mm. sukshma sharira no sir the karana sharira karana karana sharira sorry sorry i meant karana sharira i was telling so <laughs> it is the karana sharira abhimani state okay and the last question deep sleep state can either signify ananda or complete ignorance is this true or false it is ananda as well as ignorance it is a ignorant ananda <laughs> bliss of ignorance that is what dr satya was telling bliss of ignorance it is yes, true sir. yes sir thank you sir thank you madam for a wonderful quiz thank you dr satya for a wonderful session i must thank dr komal sir for his unique introduction and discussion on the subject and shrimati sukanya for introducing us to that beautiful shloka from valmiki ramayana and thank you all friends for your participation and feedback which inspires us to do better friends as announced in our geeta jayanti session on 2nd december i appeal to all of you to kindly join us and offer your generous reverential offering as you have been doing the mode of payment to the account is displayed on the screen it will also be sent to you in the telegram group i must add that the decision of offering and amount is purely voluntary and there is no compulsion at all as you are aware our classes are totally free and your entire contributions will be offered at the lotus feet of our gurus details of such offerings will be shared with you all we'll come back with our verse to verse bhagavad gita verse sessions 125 on 9th december to continue our study of mundaka upanishad please log in at 6:45 pm sharp thank you let us conclude with our usual shanti mantra om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate om shanti 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि ओम जो